Okay, what you're going to learn in this tutorial is how to put animation on your player character. And then what you see down below is our opponent character. You'll learn how to put that basic animation on that character as well. Uh, this obstacle here is an impassable obstacle. When we move down next to our opponent character, the AI activates. Our opponent character starts chasing after us, starts uh, firing at us. Uh, you'll learn how to put the sound effects on for when the opponent character chases after your player character. When our player uh, character gets far enough away from our opponent character, then the opponent character stops searching for our player character. Go to key pressed. Okay, so now we see this test of a key is pressed. We're going to click here. We're going to hold shift and then press L and then type EFT. And uh, we're going to left click on left. We could have pressed enter as well. We're then going to click OK. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to set it up so that when the left key is pressed, our animation plays. We're going to do that by using the animation name. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to go back to where we work on our art, which is here. We're going to click on our player and then double click to go into the player. So see our, we have this animation one, which is this idle animation. And we have this walk right here, but for our animation name, we don't have a name. So what we're going to do is we're going to left click here and then we're going to type in walk. We're then going to click apply. Okay, so now that we have that done, what we're going to do is go back to our programming here. We're going to click add action. We're going to go to sprite, animations and images, and then we're going to select change the animation by name. That's the way we needed a name. So we're going to left click here. We're going to go to, for our object, select player. And then for our animation name, this is uh, the name that we put in. So what we want to do is hold shift, put quotations down. This is important. Make sure that you put the name that uh, we put in, which if you followed right along with me, it's walk. So with the walk in between those two quotations, we're then going to click OK. OK, so with that done, when we click the uh, preview button, you'll see that when I press right, we don't uh, have our animation. However, when I press left, our character is animating. And really what we need is uh, to just have our character stop animating. So what I'm going to do is click this X button to get out of here. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to click play. So when we press the right key, the down key, the up key, we don't have our animation. However, when we press the left key, we do have our animation. When we stop pressing the left key, our player uh, character keeps moving. So we want to uh, make it so when the player character isn't moving that the player goes back to their idle animation. Okay, so in the past I had shown how to do a uh, top-down player walking animation and how to set up the programming for that. And what I did was I did the same setup and then I had a left key like you see here, and then I had right key, up key, down key. We actually don't need that. So what we can do is we can double click here and what we can do is we have our options here. We selected key pressed. We can actually go to any key pressed. So we'll left click there and then we'll just click OK. OK, so when we press any key, our character will now start their walking animation. Now we need to set up things so that when the character, our player character isn't walking, they go to their idle animation. So we're going to click here so we have this blue line. Uh, highlighted underneath, you know, where you see players moving as well as add an action. Then we're going to click 
this uh, add an event button. We're then going to go to add condition. We're going to go to top down movement. We're going to select is moving like before. We're then going to select player. However, this time we're going to click invert condition and then we're going to click OK. OK, so uh, we have this player is moving set for our condition. Now what we want to do is click add action. We want to go to sprite. We want to go to animations and images. And then we want to go to change the animation by name. We're going to select player. Then we're going to click here, put in quotation, idle, then quotation, then we'll click OK. OK, now when we click play, click this to maximize our view. Now when we push a button, our player walks, then when they stop, they go to their idle animation. Okay, now that we have that set up, pretty much our programming for our player is done. So I'm gonna, I click this button just to hide some of the, uh, the visual coding there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our new scene. We're gonna go to our opponent. I'm gonna left click. I'm then gonna left click on these three dots right here. And then what we're gonna do is go to edit object variables. We're gonna left click here this panel pops up. We're going to click this plus button to the right. We see variable here. We're going to change this to CU, one word. And then for the setting here, we're going to change this to zero. Then we're going to click apply. Okay, with that set up, let's go back to our visual programming. So what we want to do now is we're going to Make sure we have highlighted. We can see like this uh, blue line underneath, you know, the, the whole event there. So now we're going to click this button right here. What we're going to do now is we're going to, well, we're about to add a condition and add an action. And this is where we're first starting to work on our actual uh, enemy AI. Okay, so for this first condition, we're going to select add condition. And then what we're going to do is go to common conditions for all. Now, before I click this, uh, we're going to work with. We're going to work with uh, variables. There's multiple types of variables. So you can see this variables right here. So if I click here, see this says global variables, value of a scene variable, text of a scene variable. You do not want this. Even though this is very close to where you see common conditions for all, we see variables. You don't want this variables right here. And this is the variables you see before I click here. Now I'm going to click here. Now when I click here, all of this opens up, right? You're going to scroll down and you see this variables looks just like the other ones. However, this is the value of an objects variable. So just be careful about that. So what you're going to do is you're going to left click on value of an object's variable. This is the opponent's variable. So you're going to left click on opponent. And then you're going to click here to select the variable. So we're going to select CU. This is the variable that we made up for our opponent. I'm going to left click to get away from that. We're going to click here. And then we're going to select equal to. I When I click down here, this change to invert condition. We don't want this that happen when I click down that happens to be careful of that as well and for this setting we want to change this to one so then we're going to click OK okay so what's going on here is we're saying look uh, when the variable of the opponent remember we went to opponent we went to the right we clicked the three dots we made a variable named CU and we uh, set that to zero. So we're saying that variable, a variable, think of it as a container of information, when that variable is equal to one. So here we're not saying, you know, how this gets to one, but we're saying when it is equal to one, we want you to do this. And that's what we're about to do now. 
Okay, so we're going to go to Add Action. We're going to look for Pathfinding Behavior, which is here. We're going to go down to Move to a Position. So we say Move the Object to a Position. So this is the object that we want to move is our opponent. So now we have this, uh, okay, which the position you want to move to, right? So we click here. Sometimes when you click in GDevelop, you'll see like an option there. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to click here. We're going to go up to Common Expressions for All Objects. Click there. Then we're going to go to Position. Then we're going to select X Position. We're going to click here. We want player because we want our opponent to move towards the player. So we're going to left click here, then we're going to click done. Okay, so now what we want to do with this is we're going to press the space key. We're going to enter a plus. We're going to press the space key again. Don't be concerned with that. Now we're going to click on the blue button again. We're going to scroll up. We're looking for random. We're going to select random. Then we're going to select random 